for the evening, Donald Baliapa. Donald is speaking from the Advanced Communication Series Manual, Humorously Speaking. And his project, project number five, is called The Humorous Speech. This speech will be five to seven minutes in length. The purpose of this speech, well, the purpose of any humorous speech, is to entertain. Humorous speeches have a theme, make a point, mm. tell a story, and use exaggeration to create the humor. Now I'd like to give you a little information about Donald that's relevant to his speech. And since he's written it in first person, I'm going to do it in my best Donald voice. <laughs> I was born and raised in Cameroon, Africa. After living in France for eight years, I moved to the U.S. where I have been living for ten years. I went to school at the California Baptist University in Riverdale, Riverside, and I joined two Toastmasters two and a half years ago and have been enjoying the ride. I love meeting new people and learning about different cultures. I have been really very fortunate over the past years to meet wonderful people from all over the world. I love traveling, which has always been my dream. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> The title of Donald's speech is, Follow Your Dream, Donald Baliaba. Donald Baliaba, follow your dream. You want to give the speech? <laughs> <laughs> My dad was a nurse. And, <laughs> and he always, that was the best he could do, based on his circumstances. I, <coughs> He always dreamed about me, his first son, to become a doctor. Well, might not be happy today because I became an accountant. But I remember I always had a dream. I'm here today for the Toastmasters and welcome guests to tell you to follow your dreams. What dreams do you have when you were a kid? I loved to play. I wanted to play all the time. And I wanted to travel the world. But my dad wanted me to study. I still remember. Like, if you see, I don't know, I'm sure one of these years is probably longer than the other one. Because, <laughs> because I remember was, I was playing with my, my, fr my friend. My dad comes back from work, and you see me playing there. That's always what we do. We come there in the middle of the car, like this, take me on. <laughs> <laughs> so it was painful, but today it's pretty strong. <laughs> he wanted me to study all the time, but I wanted to play. Eventually, at some point in my life, my dad passed, I had the freedom. It's his dream or my dream. When you have a dream, no matter what, there will be no sayers. People telling you, because most of dreams sometimes are crazy. That's why maybe a lot of people don't follow the dreams, because sometimes they're crazy, and for normal people, that's not realistic. You know? No sayers could be your friends, your family. For me, leading the path was my mom. My mom was a hardcore Christian, and a deacon at church. She had a crew. I remember when I decided to take a break from education and focus on sport because I became a volleyball player, volleyball player. I wanted to become a professional volleyball player and travel the world. I was living in Cameroon. One day, coming back from practice, I see a group of people praying in the room. I'm hungry. But I know if I go to the kitchen and start eating, my mom kill me. I have to join the prayer. So I joined the group, sit there, and they're praying for God to change someone's heart. The person is lost, he became a gangster, and uh, we're praying that he comes back and goes back to school. And that person was me. <laughs> are you serious? I'm not a gangster, mom. Yes, you are. So that was my no that I had to do with. 
You have people telling you those things. Don't do it. You can't do it. It's not going to happen. I knew I had to focus more and train more, harder, and it happened. Eventually, God answered my prayer, not their prayer. <laughs> and I moved to France, where I played for many years and traveled. Today, I'm here. And living in beautiful California, keep pursuing the dream. And living the dream every day. Also, there's something. When you choose to live your dream, there are trade-offs. You have to give up on something. Mine, according to my mom, all, I'm the first born and we have three, I have three youngest brothers and three sisters. And I am not married, no kids yet. I'm a, for my mom, that's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I went to a wedding, my cousin's wedding, and I was sitting next to my mom and the pastor was saying his words and making his points about how a man should meet a wife and they get married and they have a family and it's important and if you don't do that you're not responsible and sitting next to me I, I, could, I, I could see that coming big time <laughs> next to me she says amen amen <laughs> after the service did you hear what he said you're not responsible I'm like, why is this? Not, it's not about my cousin. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy for her. He said, no, you shouldn't be happy for her. She will go to heaven, you go to hell. <laughs> I'm like, okay. She's like, do you want me to help you? Because I know this girl. Oh, no. That's always, that's what always happening. But that's the trade-off for me. Okay, maybe, maybe I was stable somewhere. It would have happened. That's not something I'm concerned. I'm, con I'm happy living my life because I have a question for you. At the end of the day, and our Toastmasters say that you, do you want to say I live the life that I wanted? Or, you know, I just cruise a beautiful life that I didn't like, but it was okay. I was able to pay my bills. I was. What do you want? There is no age limit to follow your dreams. Last year, I went to New York to run the marathon. And New York, you get there, the marathon starts at 10, but you have to get there at 6 a.m. by the starting line. The security check, you have to pass at least three security gates. I got in there, it's about 7.30, it's freezing. Freezing, because you're outside. And I see a little tent. You have some people in the tent, very, it was very cold, so I managed to get into the tent and I sat like this, and there was an older man next to me, and it was men from China. And I was in there, it should be only athletes. I was kind of surprised, like, what is he doing here? And I asked him, and he told me, how old are you think I am? I say, maybe 50, I was trying to be, I knew he was older than that, and he told me 72. I was like, what are you doing here? He always dreamed about coming to America and run the New York Marathon. But he had kids, a wife, and a job. Never happened. All of a sudden, two years ago, he saw this ad saying, hey, you want to go to New York, run the marathon? It was all inclusive. You pay, and they take you there. He knew this is the time. His wife thought he was crazy. All the neighbors thought he was crazy. He's 72. He decided to do it. And he was there. I didn't see him at the end, but he made it happen. So, if you have a dream, it's not over until it's over. Follow your dreams, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>